Hey guys, so welcome back to part two of the parallax camera tutorial. Um, if you haven't done part one, I've, I've linked that in the description below. But in this video, we're going to continue where we left off and start to add the blueprints to the camera. So without further ado, we'll go into it now. Okay, so before we go into the blueprints, I just need to quickly update you on the settings that are held within the component section here. Now, in my previous video, the plane attached itself to the camera but it needs to be attached to the default scene route here. Uh, another thing I forgot to do was I forgot to set the projection mode on the camera settings to orthographic and change it to 1024. Um, hopefully that should make the stop any errors occurring because it's not in uh, orthographic mode and it's set at the correct width. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go into the event graph and start adding the blueprints in. So we need the event begin play node, and we need to create a variable to begin with, and we're going to call this player. So it's already dropped down here. So type in 2D side scroller, 2D side scroller character, or whatever your character is that you're using. And we just want an object reference. We're going to call that player. Drag that in, and we'll pull a is valid node on. And then what we use this for is, oh, before we quickly do that, make that instance editable so that, uh, so that it's public. Um, click on the parallax camera. And you see under default here, we've got uh, player. Get the eyedropper and select the character there. And you should see it populate with 2D side scroll the character. Back in the blueprints, what we want to do is we want to grab a reference to this plane. Drag off that. We want to create a dynamic material instance. We want the parallax material. Connect is valid. Promote a variable. I'm going to call this mid. Okay. Now that we've connected that, what we need to do is we need to get the player controller. Set view target with blend. Get a reference to self. Connect to that. And click hit, hit compile. And what should happen is now that should set it to the new camera. Yeah, there we go. You can see there it's defaulted already to the new camera. So what we want to do now is we just want to add some code to make sure that it, uh, it actually centers on the play. So holding control, drag the player node in, drag off that, get back to location, uh, split the strokes pin, and we're only interested on the X axis and the Z axis. So drag off X, we want make vector, connect to the Z and then from this we want to go to the teleport and then we want to get back to rotation okay I hit compile and we'll just quickly test that hit play and as you can see it's now centered on the player character okay so we're going to go back into the parallax camera blueprints so we're going to start um, putting the code in after the event tick so first thing we need to do is control and drag the play into the world we're going to get the velocity and we're only interested on what happens in the x variable so what we need to do is we need to make a vector. And what we could do is we'll just normalize the vector as well. So normalize 2D vector. And here we're going to add a multiply by a float. In this case, 
we're going to provide this to a variable. I'm going to set this as the background speed. So for this, hit compile. And I'm going to change this to, I'm just going to put this at 0.2 for now. We're going to get the length. Back to length. Get the world delta seconds. I'm going to multiply float by float. Connect that. And what we're going to do next is we're literally just going to off this multiply, promote this to a variable. I'm going to call this delta. So that effectively, this is basically setting the delta distance travel per frame. So if the player moves on the x axis, it will calculate the delta for that. And it will just basically tell how much uh, how much offset to apply on, onto the background. Quickly hit compile. And there you go. So that's the first part. Next, what we want to do is we want to determine if, if the player is moving either left or right. Now thankfully, um, there is actually a variable which we can access in play. So control, drag that in. And we want, if you just type in is moving, and you got here, get uh, Boolean is moving right. Drag off that, just create for a branch. Connect that. And what we want to happen is, if the player is moving right, that's fine, but if not, we need to negate the vector. So what we do is we go delta, control drag it in, drag off that, and negate it. That way we can determine if the player is moving right, the direct the delta is should be positive. If the, the player is moving left, the delta should be negative. So with a negate node, we're basically doing that condition. So negate the delta, hold alt, drag the delta in and connect that up there. Okay, so the next part, we need to calculate uh, what the offset is based on the current delta. So for this, we need a new variable. So add a new variable. This is gonna be a float, and this is gonna be called current offset. Hit compile, drag that in. And there you can see that's ready to be basically set. So what we need to do is we need to get the current offset and add whatever the delta is at the time. So you need a float, add them together. And what we need to do is we need to set that as the current current offset. Now the material that we're using is lurping between zero and one based on the the offset value. So what we need to do is we need to determine if that value current offset goes greater than one, what happens. So control drag another current offset node in. We want just a greater than. If the current offset is greater than one, put a branch, connect that. We want to, if that is true, what we need to do is perform a modulus check. So drag the current offset in. Go for division, whole and remainder. And we want the divisor to be one. Drag the current offset node in. Connect the remainder value. And then set that to true there. The other thing I forgot to do is I forgot to change that as well so it goes past that. So I'll just drag this in closer. Here's that whole sequence of nodes there. Okay, so for the final part of this video, uh, we're just going to set the 
current offset into the material instance. So at the end of here, what we need to do is hold control, drag in the mid variable, drag off that, type in set scalar parameter value. And if you want, we call those offsets. And what we want to do there is we just literally want to drag in current offset. Connect that to that. And before I forget, we obviously want to bypass that if it's false. And we'll just double click on there to add some nodes so it looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, we'll give that a quick test. There you go. And as you can see here, when the player is moving either left or right, the background is changing um, based on the direction they're going in. So, so far that's working fine. So in the part three, we'll look at making so that the, the camera actually moves around with the player as well.